Yesterday, I discussed the topic of breakthrough with a fellow believer. He is also in agreement with Christ. I don't seek fellowship with those that are against Christ. I'm talking about those that are ignorant of Christ's ways. I'm talking about those who are resistant against Christ, who hold on to religious ideas that they don't examine. Such folks, I want no fellowship with them, including folks that resist biblical prosperity. Look, me and this fellow believer, we discussed how weird it is that many people go to church every Sunday, they shout about breakthrough, 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 but 10 years pass by, sometimes 20 years, and there's no breakthrough at all. So that led me now to record this video. Speaking about the breakthrough, I know other people, don't need to mention names, I know other people who for the past 15 years they've been speaking about breakthrough, 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 in a context of they have talents, they have abilities, and they want to use it to become wealthy. For 15 years they've been talking about breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. The breakthrough never came. They only got older, they only got stressed out, they only got disappointed and frustrated, but there's no breakthrough. There's something I want to highlight to you here. I've spoken about this before, so it's not really something new, but I want you to pay attention to this. When you have a migrant community that settles in a host country, Nine out of ten times, if a mind community is led by leaders or elders who are wise, those elders will start their own businesses, they will develop their own local economy as a mind community. Yes, they will get along with the economy of those countries, but they will seek to develop their own economy as a, as a migrant community. For the simple reason that it may happen that the host population may turn on them. Especially when the host population seeks for, scape, seeks for scapegoats. So if they have their own economy as a migrant community, then if it happens that the host community turns on them, they can remain functional without having to face repercussions by the host community. The host community may turn on them, but they won't be affected by job losses, nor by short, nor by costs in their finances, because they have their own local migrant economy. Those elders of those migrant communities, from the Chinese communities, the Chinese communities, the Islamic communities, they do this a lot. They are quite wise. There are migrants that from communities overseas, but they seek integration in the host economy of the host country. This is applauded by the local politicians. You see, they want to integrate. They're not here to cause trouble, they want to integrate. And that's applauded also by right-wing um, populists saying, oh, those migrants come here, they need to integrate, they need to integrate. The migrant communities that are, that are smart because they are led by wise elders would not integrate. They would get along with the host economy of the host country because they have no other choice. But they would develop their own local economy as a migrant community. Because if they would assimilate and completely integrate into the host economy, listen, they are not from there. And when things are going smoothly, the host community la laughs and smiles with them. But when things go wrong, when there's a crisis or when there's tension, they'll begin to weed out those that don't belong to them. And those migrants who have integrated will be the ones in anxiety, in trouble, losing jobs, facing political violence, and then those same 
right-wing populists or those same people that applauded integration would now come with other would now come with excuses against against them to justify the violence against the migrant community. So migrant communities that are led by wise elders, they develop their own local economy. When you go to the book of Acts, what happened? You had believers in Corinth, in Thessalonica, in Rome, in some of the Roman towns in Spain also. The believers operated locally, not internationally. You had the Apostle Paul that went from um, community of believers to other community of believers, but eventually all communities of believers operated locally and autonomously. They did interact with one another, of course, but they operated locally. And they operated as migrants, even if they were native to the lands. They developed their own local economies. And together, as tiny economies of believers, they cooperated together. But they operated locally and in an autonomous manner. You get what I'm saying here? They were practical. They were wise. What's happening now? Those Babylon churches teach you, they're teaching you to integrate, integrate, integrate. But at the same time, they're telling you we're in the world, not of the world. Hold on a minute. If we're in the world, we're not of the world. Why don't we develop our own economies and our own means? No. Babylon churches don't teach you that. They teach you that you're in the world, but not of the world, but you have to be, you have to show more pleasant behavior than people of the world. That's what they mean with being the light of the world. So they are not in line with Christ. They're not teaching you the truth, and what they teach you will harm you in the long run. Just think about it. If the world hates the name of Christ, and sure believe you care the name of Christ, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be better for you to operate in wealth and abundance while you're in the world so that if the world would turn on you you won't notice it at all no Babylon churches want you dependent on the world so that when you face hostility you could, would go to the local Babylon church to seek relief that's what Babylon churches want for you it's not God's will what does this have to do with the breakthrough you can't partake in a demonic stronghold which is an obstacle to deliverance and expect to have a breakthrough because once you break through you break through the obstacle that's what the breakthrough is if this is the obstacle the violence and you break through you you break through it but how can you be part of the obstacle how can you sponsor the obstacle yet you want breakthrough that can't happen but that's what a lot of pagan Christians think. And many believers, believers who are stuck in pagan Christianity think the same way. Their thinking is, I, I, I want to say reprobate. But if I say that, then I would imply that those beliefs are reprobates. They're not reprobates. But their attitude is a reprobate attitude. Let me say this, their attitude is a reprobate attitude because you cannot finance the resistance. You can't sponsor the obstacle and at the same time break through the obstacle to break through you must be separate from the obstacle and then oppose the obstacle to move forward a lot of folks talk about breakthroughs 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 but they are part of their the opposition against their own breakthrough and i mentioned before a breakthrough will imply that you will go through some difficult situations because you're breaking through you're, you're passing through resistance so that's not going to happen without a fight you can anticipate the fight so you can pass through the circumstance unharmed that's what Christ means with you'll have power over scorp to trample scorpions and serpents and will camp of the enemy and nothing shall by no means harm you that's what Christ meant 
Christ didn't mean that no trouble, no attack, and no fight will come. But you'll, be, you'll be prepared and you'll anticipate the fight so that when the fight comes, you'll pass through unharmed. Yes, it will be difficult, but you'll pass through unharmed. That's what, what God's will is for you. That's how you break through. But a lot of folks, they don't understand this. They think a breakthrough is when suddenly this big relief and things just happen automatically for them. That's a fantasy, that's a hoax. Yet many people look for that. That's not a breakthrough. Believing in that, counterfeit breakthrough, which isn't a breakthrough, opens you up to demonic deception. Because the only thing Satan has to do now is to present someone to you who appears to have everything going smoothly, and then you can think a lot of minute. How can I be serving the Lord for so many years and I have no breakthrough? Look at this guy. Then you begin to think, what am I doing wrong? Then, then self-doubt is introduced into you. And now Satan comes with solutions to draw you away from Christ. Going back to those minor communities, I've used them as a parable. Learn from them. How can you... Well, let's, just, let's just think about this for a moment. You want to be secured. You want to be prosperous. You want to be free. You want, to be, you, you want violence to remain far from you. Then why would you integrate in a structure of violence? If you want to be free from violence and free from the harm that violence causes because you want to operate in real safety, then why would you integrate in a structure of violence? Why? That doesn't add up. That's, that's, contradicting. that's contradicting. So, understand the following. And with this, I'm going to close this video. In this world, what I'm about to say now, don't take it personally because I don't do, I don't do personal messages here on YouTube. You know that of me. I do spiritual messages. <coughs> In this world, only thieves want you to be truly prosperous. I'm talking about the world now. I'm not talking about believers. In the world, only thieves want you to be prosperous. All other folks wish you the best. They may want what's best for you, but real prosperity with real impact, common people, world people don't want you to have that. They don't want each other to have it. They get upset. They get anxious when someone amongst them increases. That's how common people are. That's how worldly people are. Thieves, on the other hand, know that if you're prosperous, they can steal. You can't steal from those who have nothing. Thieves want you to be prosperous in the world. Does it mean now that you shouldn't be prosperous? You should be prosperous. But just realize that not everyone that cheers your prosperity is cheering you your prosperity for you. They're cheering your prosperity because they have plans in how they're going to exploit your prosperity. And that's why it's important not to conform to the diabolical patterns of this world. Because in this world, this, in this apolonistic world here, only thieves, only robbers want you to be prosperous. Other people just want to get along and be left alone. Only thieves want you to be prosperous in this world. And they will offer you a confident prosperity that will make you dependent on them so they can drain you. That's what the world is doing. That's why it kind of confuses me when I hear believers singing in the name of Yahweh, singing or they singing all kinds of Hebrew phrases. They want to be original and authentic. But when it comes to material prosperity, they back down. They don't want anything to do with it. Why? Because they sense the resistance. But then they don't want to break through. So they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. From such folks, turn away. I mean it. Turn away from them. From 2019, turn away from such folks. I mean it. They'll only bring violence, sickness, diseases, harm, and all kinds of plagues onto you.
Well, as is for now, I'll with Christ, be at peace.